Who knew that Apple is doing some weird stuff with their USB Thunderbolt ports? I didn't, and now I found out the hard way. Now recently I've been looking for a really fast external SSD so that I can make my work with video and photo editing easier and faster, specifically moving toward a 4K workflow. Now on this quest I tested four different NVMe housings, four different NVMe SSDs, and also two normal ready-made SSDs. All of these videos are linked up here as well as in the video description. But in this video specifically, I wanna talk about the IC Box, which is a 3.2 USB housing. However, I just found out during all of these tests that this is actually not supported by macOS or rather the MacBooks. The annoying thing is that not even my old Intel MacBook Pro can use the full speed of USB 3.2. Now sadly, I found this out after the company sent me this for review so that I can make videos with this tested and compare to others in this type of world. However, I wanted to basically make this video to tell you that if you are using a Mac system, and you want to get a NVMe housing or any type of USB device, it is not really a good point to look at a USB 3.2 housing or device because macOS or Apple has decided to not support this with the MacBook Pro lineup. And I think the M1 Mac might be in that problem as well. Now, if you look here on the screen, I tested the IC Box NVMe housing with four different NVMe SSDs. Sadly, the Crucial P5, which you see here with the dashes, did not even mount in this specific housing. But the others gave me the result that basically it is using one gigabyte per second in data transfer off and onto the NVMe drive. Now you have to know that based on the information, even here on the packaging, you might find out that this supports up to 20 gigabits, which should mean that it goes to about two gigabytes per second when you have a actual device that can support USB 3.2. Now with the Apple MacBook Pro, this is not the case. USB 3.2 is not supported and automatically falls back onto USB 3.1. And then you get the speed results that I have here. Now I don't have any reason to believe that this housing would not give you the expected two gigabytes per second in read and write, or at least close to that when you have a device that supports USB 3.2. It is just really sad that Apple did not make this compatible as well, especially since they are supporting USB 4.0 and it just doesn't make any sense to me that the USB 3.2 standard was just skipped in that because it would still be a valuable addition, especially because this housing right here costs about 45 or 50 euros, which is about three times less than the next best thing, which has a USB 4 port or rather USB 4 connection. So this is a extremely cheap solution if you want to use it with a NVMe SSD and that way connect that drive to your computer. It is just 50 bucks for just the housing and then choosing a relatively inexpensive NVMe SSD, like for example, the 970 Evo Plus from Samsung you can get extremely good results on this Mac. And again, I'm suspecting that this actually would give you almost double, at least in the read speed, when you're connecting this to a device that actually properly supports USB 3.2. Now, I also wanna show you the different read and write speeds that I was able to get with this when I was doing a 100 gigabyte data transfer with Carbon Copy Cloner, reading it from the SSD to my computer, and of course, also writing it onto the SSD. And that took one minute and 43 seconds in pretty much both directions, one minute and 41 for the writing and one minute 43 for the reading. Now, I think that that is a tremendous result. It's a really, really solid result for this device. And that is specifically interesting when you're looking at the price in comparison to other NVMe housings, which start at about 140 euros. Now, if you're interested in different NVMe housings and also ones that are supporting USB 4.0, then you can check out the video linked up here where I have a comparison which includes this one, but also shows you other NVMe housings and of course showing that with again, four different NVMe SSDs, including a PCI Express 4.0 and that is also a topic in itself, whether or not that is actually worth it. Now, this video is a cautionary tale so that you know that the M1 lineup of Macs is not compatible with the USB 3.2 standard, and it will not give you the expected speed that you might want to get out of your devices. 
which does not mean that those devices are bad. They're just going to fall back onto USB 3.1, the standard that came before USB 3.2. If you want to have more speed, choose USB 4.0, but those devices are also much more expensive. With all that said, I hope this video was interesting for you. If it was, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to shop the IC box or any of the SSDs, you can check out the links in the description. Those always help out my channel so that I can make more videos like this happen. And with all that said, I hope you have an amazing day, make it your life, and I will see you in the next video. Ciao, ciao.